Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, warshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is Sierra and today we're back with another battle report, this time from the bridge of Tier 7 Italian destroyer, Luca Tarigo. The Italian destroyer line has really grown on me. If you've watched me on stream or watched any of my recent videos, you know that when these ships first were announced and the, everybody, we started combing through stats and the shell types, everybody went, what in the hell is Wargaming thinking? These are, this is, no, this is terrible. Are they on crack? And then we got to play the ships and suddenly we discovered, you know what? We were wrong. These ships are, well, I was wrong at least. These ships are a hell of a lot of fun. Now they are not destroyer on easy mode, quite the opposite. In my opinion, the Italian destroyer line is a little bit of destroyer on hard mode. I'd say maybe advanced destroyer. Let's put it that way. Um, spawning here into the north side of Fault Line in a division with some friends. That is fellow North American community tr contributor Sone MG, friend of the stream, friend of the channel, and then of course one of his regulars. That is Pockington back there in the Duke of York. We're going to have an immediate dash down here to the sea cap on Fault Line, and we can already know there's the opposing Aviere. Uh, is just off to the south. Now, I'm going to take some risks here early that I probably wouldn't ordinarily take. Right? We know that that, that destroyer is down there. You can see there the, the cap is ticking up, so we already know he's there. There he is. We've got him lit on the surface just briefly. We're going to throw some shells, and he is going to pop his little fancy Italian smoke, especially after I get hit him and get some resets. I'm going to dump the torpedoes, thinking, well, maybe he'll just sit there in the smoke. But no. He actually continues to push. All right. Well, that's actually a bit of a surprise to me. I don't realize it at first. It takes me a minute to, to kind of look out and realize, oh, this guy's, this guy's still coming. But here's the difference, at least from my perspective. I have friends close by, and, well, his friends are a lot farther away. Now, I still don't play this engagement very well. I'm very, very broadside. His smoke, you can see he's coming towards me. His, that smoke cloud is continuing to charge. He's going to come out right here. And uh, I'm going to get a salvo, a good salvo in, but then again, so is he. His SAP goes in, all goes in up forward, and of course, I smoke thinking, oh yeah, I'll break contact. Nope, he's too close, he sees right through my smoke. But again, the Duke of York and the Scores, my two buddies nearby, we knew that we knew this was coming. They all had the HP, HE in the barrel, and we, we just annihilated that guy. So a little bit of div work there allows us to take an early ship lead and pick up this cap. Now, let's have a look at how the rest of the board is developing. We're very, very weak over on the A flank. We're decently strong here at C. It's four, there's four of us here. And there are some folks in the middle of the board, although it looks like, one, where did we lose the Shinonomi? I uh, can't, can't quite make it out. But yeah, he is, uh, he is gone. So both teams now down a ship. I get grim glimpsed by the planes in time for this Agano to get a few shells into me, which really irritates me. I sort of toggled my throttle uh, incorrectly there. I could repair this, and I still might here. We'll see what happens. But mostly I'm about, okay, let's get back down the channel and uh, and get over to the middle of the board because Anagano is not going to stop this push, right? Duke of York is right behind me. Pockington having fun with that guy. And, uh, yeah, there's just, there's just no point in staying here. Looks like I'm going to let the uh, the engine in cap continue just in case the carrier comes back. Between the Weimar and the Duke of York, they do put the Agano down, and we're back to our one-ship lead. We obviously pick up C. The Sirocco down at the bottom into B doing his best. Let's see what's up here in front of us. Friendly Cashalot right on the edge of the cap. Looks like he's submerged. So he's not providing me any vision whatsoever. Very, very sad. So my plan here is to kind of come around the corner and 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 spot for the team, work these ships on the left. I was planning on our I was already planning on turning here to starboard and cutting through this gap. When the most amazing thing happens, look at the minimap. The enemy cachalot is right in front of me. Right in front of me. Completely alone. Completely unsupported. Well, guys, I'm in a destroyer. I'm a, even better, I'm in an Italian destroyer. There's only one thing to do. Let's go waste this clown. There's few things in this game as satisfying as stomping on cockroaches, ladies and gentlemen. And that is exactly how I look at cachalot in this game. All the submarines, I love... I love stepping on cockroaches. Now, we're both proxying each other inside of two kilometers. He tries emergency torpedo launch, doesn't get anything. I cut my throttle and smoke so that the spotting the spotting of his friends goes away. He's still proxy spotting me, but I've got enough depth charges. This guy's going out. 
The smoke is there so that once he dies, I am no longer spotted. It's a little bit, a little bit of insurance. Now that engagement happened very quickly. I'm gonna pause it here and I wanna talk about a couple of things because I think it's very, very underrated capability of the Italian, the Italian destroyer line. One is these ships are actually above average submarine hunters. You don't think about it to look at their their depth charge damage, right? Their depth charge damage is fairly middle of the road. I think it's about 20, 27, 2800 typically, something along those lines. You can invest in it a little bit and buff it, I think, up to in the low 30s. Maybe maybe there's 3200 and it buffs to a little higher than that. It's nothing like the 5000 damage depth charges you get on the Americans and the Brits, okay? But these ships are very fast, meaning that basically there's no sub that's going to escape it. And that rolling smoke means that once you know where he is, particularly in these middle tiers where radar is not nearly that common, I can use that rolling smoke to continue to pursue him and, and just vomit depth charges out while his teammates cannot support him. They cannot see me to kill me. I'm going to vomit some torpedoes in the middle of the board while my smoke expires. It's not quite time for me to push into the mid. There's too many ships out there, including including a big old battleship. But our our submarine is uh, taking or so spotting and, and helping take out that uh, that destroyer right there. And uh, I'm like, all right, well, let's back off a bit. Let's let the team help clean up the, the board just a little bit. And we'll see if I can land some torpedoes on that battleship in the middle. I think it's a KG-5. So I have to do some weird maneuvering here to back off a bit. Pockington has pushed through the gap, same as I did. He's now also playing the middle of the board. The Weimar off to his left flank, and our friendly friendly Ranger is pushing down into the friendly confines of the sea cap because we've basically swept the seas of enemy ships on that half of the map. It's four to four here, and the enemy team is going to pick up B here in just a moment. Our friendly Cachalot trying to limp away with no battery. He's, he dove probably a little too early and... And now he's a little caught out up here. He's on the surface, and that's not going to end well for him just because, well, there's a lot of ships up there that can spot him. The Agano, for example, can spot him. Sohn's trying to pitch in with the AP where he can, landing, trying to land some citadels on this Agano. They are going to get some good damage in him. I think Pockington's going to pick this kill up in a minute. Cashalot continuing to run, but still on the surface, hilariously. As now the T-22 is in my gun range, and it's time to time to make to, time to make my uh, presence known to this guy as well. Pockington had the HE in the barrel, absolutely crushes him. Just enough SAP finishes him off, and you can sort of see the power of the SAP there. So so good with these destroyers. One of the things that the Italian destroyer line does really really well that is really underrated is they are fabulous destroyer assassins. Most of the time, when you have a gunboat destroyer getting a gunfight with another gun with with another destroyer, it, you know he probably you know assuming that he wins, he's still going to be lit on the surface afterwards. There's probably another ship around, say 10, 12 kilometers away, still spotting him, that will enable the team to keep getting damage on that gunboat after he has won the gunfight. But the Italian destroyers are very hit or miss this way. They'll pop in, get some shells in, assassinate a destroyer, but because their gun bloom is so small, unless you buff it artificially with uh, commander skills, their gun bloom is so small that they're just not spotted later. And it's so amazing. It's so amazing. They're like little stealthy ninjas. They come in, pew, pew, two, three, four salvos. I wipe an opposing destroyer out, and now that guy, his teammates can't retaliate because just like John Cena, you can't see me. I'm gone. My teammates doing the Lord's work here. Pockington having a great game, picking up his second, so picking up his first kill. We get the general offensive uh, achievement there as an Atlantis coming into the middle of the board. Now, I'm going to do something probably a little stupid here. The Atlanta, of course, is an excellent destroyer killer. And right as I'm about to cap, right as I'm about to be done with capping, I'm like, I know, I'll shoot my guns at the Atlanta. And of course he goes, destroyer, mine, 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 which is the right play for an Atlanta. He's going to clip me with just enough shells before he dies to reset my cap points. Oh, that was so stupid. I should never have fired right there. And I think maybe I was going to get lit on the surface anyway, which is why I did it. But man, it was just like, oh, now I got to stop and wait for the cap points to start over again. Rah, rah, rah. Two ship lead. We're going to be able to pick up B, the opposing carrier, uh, firmly on the run. We've got a good presence here in the middle of the board. Sohn's taking some good cover over here behind this island as Pockington is over here dueling this Fuso. Fuso doesn't really seem to know how to play this engagement. Very, very broad as the opposing Akatsuki shows up. Now that is something, as a destroyer player, I cannot allow. I cannot allow my friendly battleship 
to get torpedoed by the Saketsuki. That is not okay. So we're almost done capping. I'm getting my I'm getting my uh, my guns flipped. My ship hull turned. We're gonna finish this cap. Now you can see the Akasuki's torps going by right there. The Pockington dodged all of them. Bow in, but um, we got we're gonna get this guy off the board, right? He's Pockington focused on the Fuso, and now my guns are going in on the Akatsuki. Son's gonna move up just a hair and join me. The Akatsuki, I'm not sure exactly what he's doing precisely. Like his torpedoes are on cooldown, and he's still continuing to charge the, my friendly battleship. I just I'm not positive what he thinks he's going to accomplish. But in the end, it's uh, it's not going to happen as Sone picks that kill up. Okay, it must have a torpedo reload booster or something, because there's some more torpedoes. Hawkington does take a couple, or at least one there. I guess maybe I guess maybe his torpedoes were on the reload. Hawkington, I think, decides thinks, okay, I'm gonna have to go for the ram here. He certainly is angling for it. But uh nope, I sneak in there with a few SAP shells and we we clean that up. So in a little over 10 minutes, we've taken out 10 enemy ships. The game is well in hand. All that's left, the opposing carrier to our south and the friendly Algerie off to the north. The Algerie is going to um, keep running for a bit. He thinks he's carrier chasing. I'm going I'm to go on a bit of a rant here because, well, there's at least... We've got a few minutes to kill. And, uh, well, I could probably go ahead and end the video here because obviously we're going to win this game. So let me talk for a minute about, about a, something that I see players do all the time, guys, that I'm, I'm going to beg you I'm going to beg you not to do. You see this all the time in randoms. Don't chase the carrier. Don't chase the carrier. This Algerie thinks the, that our carrier has never left spawn, right? He's back here hunting for our carrier. Now, in fairness, that's not a bad call. It's not a bad idea because very commonly carrier players never turn their engines on. But when they do, you are taking one twelfth of your team horribly out of position to accomplish nothing. Unless you know, know exactly where that guy is, man. I wouldn't bother. Like, he's just out here speculatively hunting for this thing. Um, he's got the speed to run him down if he can find him, but he doesn't know where to look. So, very, 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 um, for lack of a better word, like a noob mistake, right? So now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna continue to pursue this guy and we're gonna rack up some spotting damage while, while Sona and Pockington throw shells at this guy. They're the only ships that are in range. The Weimar that, that ran down the Ryujo is far, far too out of range. Uh, and the Ranger, of course, his planes will take time to get over there. So we're gonna rack up some spotting damage. We are eventually gonna run this Algerie down and, uh, and win this game in a, in a nice, uh, a nice, a nice little team win here on, um, on fault line. So having chased this guy down for a bit, um, we're, we're starting to starting to close the chase. Teams put some more damage into him, and I finally open up. He finally gets to see his spotter, see his tormentor. Uh, he does get a couple of a couple of his stern tubes out at me with some AP in the barrel, a couple of overpins there, nothing catastrophic. Down to 1,200 HP, and I think his plan is he's going to hide behind this island. So I'm going to pop one of my little emergency speed boosts. We're going to vomit the torpedoes out in front of him on the assumption that maybe he might come out here and blunder into one. I'm, I, think I'm, I think I'm even going to go wide, yeah. I'm just like, eh, let's just see what he does. If he drifts far enough forward, I'll have shots just like that. There we go. He's going to miss. My speed boost sort of sort of uh, allows me to get away from that. And then, uh, well, bam, there we go. Picking up that fourth kill. I just got to say, I, I'm really highlighting this game because... Um, one, I mean, double general offensive is a really is a really fun uh, a really fun achievement. I do end, I do do end up bagging the kill on this Algerie. I get like the last two or three thousand hit points. So you see, there are four kills on only twenty five thousand damage. But um, I really really like the Italian destroyer line. There there I think very commonly they will not rack up huge damage totals. It's just not what they do well. They're not equipped for it. But they are excellent finishers they're great destroyer assassins they're really good at finishing off low health targets within their gun range and the, the torpedoes are great for area denial or the occasional suicide strike if you get really really lucky so yeah um i think that's it i'm just trying to i'm just i think the main reason for showing you guys this replay is i'm trying to highlight some of the things that i really like about the italian destroyer line because i think they're very overlooked and very underrated right now Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Wash your hands, be safe, and I'll catch you next time.